Hi YouTube, this is a video response to A01011139. Seriously, what's up with their name? Anyway, the original video can be found up in the sidebar, and um, I just want to let Mr. A01011139 know that I'm kind of getting sick of debating you in the uh, comments section. That 500 letter limit is really annoying, so I thought I'd make a video instead. Um, also, you seem to ignore anything I say anyway, so I just wanted to post a video and you know, get it over and done with, um, but feel free to ignore this as well. So, let's get started. So, uh, first of all, um, the thing or the main point here is that evolution predicts the exist. Uh, I mean, according to the theory of evolution, in the distant past, uh, there were simple organisms, or sometimes they call it uh, self-replicating molecules. Uh, so, yes, uh, according to the theory of evolution, uh, there were simple life forms in the distant past, uh, much simpler than modern prokaryotes. So, evolution requires evidence for these uh, simple life forms or these uh, self replicating molecules. Yes, evolution predicts simple organisms, but no, evolution does not require evidence of these simple life forms. Evolution is change in the inherited traits of a population of organisms through successive generations. Let me restate that. Evolution is change. Therefore, evolution requires evidence of change. And there is plenty of evidence of that. Abiogenesis, on the other hand, requires evidence of self-replicating molecules. And that, sir, would be RNA. If you're unfamiliar with the properties of RNA, I suggest you go look it up for yourself. Um, so, I mean... Uh... I resent the fact that uh, you were accusing me for mixing evolution with abiogenesis, but I was not. Yes, you are. Uh, according to a theory of evolution, the first generations of living things were simple, and according to th and evolution uh, starts with the premise that these simple organisms came into existence by chance. No, that is abiogenesis. Evolution is change. Abiogenesis is the study of how life on Earth could have arisen from inanimate matter. It should not be confused with evolution. So, it is true that the theory of evolution doesn't deal on how did the first generation of living things or self-replicating molecules came into existence, but evolution starts with the premise that uh, the first generations of living things were simple and that came into existence by chance. No, that is abiogenesis. Evolution is change. So, uh, the theory of evolution uh, requires evidence uh, for simple life. No, that is abiogenesis. Evolution is change. You may ask, how simple? Well, simple enough to have come into existence by chance. Uh, this is what the theory of evolution states. And I, I am really expecting you to admit that the lack of evidence that simple life ever existed in this planet is really a valid argument against your theory. No, you are now arguing from a false premise. However, if you were instead arguing about abiogenesis, you would still be wrong. Go read up on RNA. I mean, the fossil record is full of gaps. Uh, for, for example, we see the Cambrian explosion, which is the most uh, famous gap. Uh, we see gaps in the evolution of insects, we, we see gaps in the evolution of bats, we see gaps in the evolution of pterodactyles, we see gaps in the evolution of birds. I mean, the, the fossil record is really full of gaps. Gaps, gaps, gaps. Yes, the fossil record is full of gaps. That is because fossilization is a rare event and not every single living organism was fossilized. Some information will be lost. This does not disprove evolution. Now, evolutionists uh, like to mention transitional forms. Well, the thing is that these so-called transitional forms, in most of the cases, are not even found in the correct order. You are wrong, sir. Scientists make predictions about a certain organism's lineage based on limited knowledge from the fossil record. These predictions can be proven incorrect if new fossils are unearthed. This does not disprove evolution. It simply shows that predictions based on limited knowledge can be incorrect. It's like the weather. 
Meteorologists make predictions about the weather based on the knowledge they have. Sometimes they get it wrong. This does not mean meteorological theory is wrong, just that sometimes more information is needed to make accurate predictions. Uh, just to give an example, um, land animals, or I mean, uh, land amphib I mean, amphibians, uh, predate Tiktaalik. So, how can Tiktaalik be the ancestor of amphibians if amphibians predate Tiktaalik? You really don't understand how evolution works. Evolution is not the straight progression from one form to another. It's the branching of different lineages over time. Tiktaalik may not be the direct ancestor of modern amphibians, but it still shares a lineage with them. It is an ancestral cousin. What does it take to falsify evolution? Uh, what kind of fossil or, I mean, what shall we find in the fossil record to falsify evolution? Evolutionists always bring the rabbit in the Precambrian argument. According to most evolutionists, a rabbit in the Precambrian will falsify evolution. Well, no, I don't think so. If we find a rabbit in the Precambrian, evolutionists will find an excuse to explain it. Yes, you are right. And the excuse would be, we were wrong about the lineage of bunnies. Or it could mean that bunnies are an example of convergent evolution, having arisen twice, once in the Precambrian and once more recently. And that's the great thing about science. It can admit when it's wrong and learn from mistakes. It's not stuck, mired in dogma. Uh, for example, uh, we don't have rabbits in the Precambrian, but we find, for example, wood that was carbon dated to be only 30,000 years old in the Triassic. Now, the Triassic represents a period of hundreds of millions of years. So, I mean, why did we find wood that was carbon dated to be only 30,000 years in layers that are supposed to be hundreds of millions of years old? Wow, that's, that's a good question. So I looked up your links. Firstly, creation wiki, not exactly unbiased reporting there. And secondly, answers in Genesis, again, these are not reliable sources for scientific investigation. So I did some research on my own and found that carbon dating has a limit of about 50,000 years. So even if that uh, fossilized wood was from the Triassic, you're not going to be able to get accurate results from it. And secondly, the scientists that performed those tests didn't think it was wood in the first place. Take a look. We also have uh, pollen in the Precambrian, so, I mean, pollen is evidence for flowers or pollinating plants. So, we don't have rabbits in the Precambrian, but we have evidence for flowers in the Precambrian. Again, your evidence for pollen in the Precambrian is pretty thin and easily explained. Pollen is everywhere today. It's in the air we breathe, the water we drink. It's pretty hard to avoid the stuff. Just ask anyone with allergies. So it gets into our groundwater, permeates porous rock, and then you end up with contaminated geological samples. It's not that hard to explain. And we also, uh, Michael Cremo has reported uh, hundreds of fossils or man-made articles that were found in very old, uh, in very old uh, geological uh, locations. In, in even, uh, I mean, some man-made artifacts artifacts are even older than, um, they even predate the age of dinosaurs. Okay, now you're just descending into the realms of lunacy. How is it that one man has found hundreds of pieces of evidence for uh, man predating dinosaurs, and yet thousands of scientists have found none? And why is it that no one takes his wacky finding seriously? Other than you, of course. Look, I admire you for um, critically evaluating evolution and um, exploring its limitations. And that's what science is all about. But I strongly suggest you go out and study up on it a bit more first. It's plain you don't know nearly as much as you think you do. Um, and please read some scientific work. You are not going to get an unbiased view on evolution from creationist websites. Um, go out there, pick up a copy of Darwin's Origin of the Species. Go read Dawkins' Greatest Show on Earth. Hell, just browse through Wikipedia. But you know, please do a bit more research first. Thanks.